very good afternoon everyone uh, <clears throat> i am rajat here from uh, sra bangalore chapter my colleague uh, mr osama is there uh, from sra falcon chapter he is sitting in dubai and uh, our dl mr chandana is there from sri lanka so just to let you know currently we have crossed the uh, 400 marks of attendees and uh, in terms of sra bangalore chapter we are doing lot of activities in partnership with the isra bangalore chapter and uh, just to let you know that how we will proceed chandna will present his presentation and whatever questions you have there is a question tab you just put your questions there all the questions will be attended at the end of the session so you keep posting your questions as slide progress all the questions will be attended by us at the end of the seminar so today we are lucky enough to have uh, chandana with us he is widely experienced in terms of the hvac field and he is the one of very rare selective member of the sra distinguished lecturer and recently uh, last year i believe he uh, got the sra fellow membership also so uh, chanda i will pass on uh, the dais to you you can start presenting and uh, all the best to you thank you very much i will give you the see yeah okay uh, good afternoon to you everybody uh thank you very much rajat and osama well today psychometrics will discuss about applied psychometrics now firstly psychometrics is for what purpose actually psychometrics is the basis of air condition design of course you have to have uh, cooling load calculations and then with the cooling load calculation output we need psychometrics firstly to select the cooling coil or heating coil but then air conditioning cycle air conditioning process itself has couple of psychometric processes so you got to understand then then you can design the system definitely psychometric is a must right you can see the course uh, description over there firstly understanding the basic contents of the psychometric chart we start from there and then discuss the basic processes a detailed psychometric approach is carried out utilizing the data available from uh, cooling load calculations to determine the coil conditions that's the main main branch aim of of this and selection of the air conditioner itself now there are so many uh, variants like all fresh air systems high latent load systems then high sensible load systems those we are going to discuss importance of uh, sensible heat ratio there's another uh, another thing that we are going to learn is discussed and distinguish the difference between the high and low application sensible heat applications okay this presentation is suitable for young as well as experienced engineers in the air conditioning field let's let's move on well these are the learning objectives explain the psychometric definitions describe psychometric properties understand the basic processes and the chart discuss the mixing principle and its calculations because air mixing is one of the key 
keep designs of uh, uh, air conditioning in mind. Normally, what you see in normal air conditioning day to day, what you see, what you come across, all mixing, air mixing. But then you have some other other type of systems as well, displacement volume, that kind of thing, displacement. Now, in our system, there are mixing happening in few places. So we'll do that. Explain how psychometric calculations used to define the cooling coil. Well, cooling load calculation is not merely sufficient to find the coil conditions. Why we need coil conditions? Now, when we purchase a, a split air condition, a residential air conditioner, do we need to find the coil? No, those are already manufactured units, but a real air conditioner is air handling unit. Now, air handling unit, it is not manufactured. It is manufactured to your specifications. So we have to find the coil conditions. What is coil conditions? Entering, leaving conditions of a coil. We are going to do that. Then understand the importance of apparatus dew point to maintain room RH. Recognize the importance of bypass factor. And then three important areas, high latent heat applications, high sensible heat applications, and all outdoor applications. Okay, what you can see is psychometric definitions. Everybody, I think you are, by now you, you know about all these things. Uh, in psychometrics, there are two temperature scales. What is common practice? We say, okay, 40 degrees C. But with psychometrics, you have two components. One is dry bulb, one is wet bulb. Dry bulb temperature is just registered by your ordinary thermometer, but wet bulb is something else. In thermodynamic definition is adiabatic saturation temperature. This is a temperature that is registered by a thermometer, but it is covered with a cotton a wetted wick. That water is evaporating into air, and the bulb thermostat, the thermometer bulb, the temperature is decreasing until air saturates around the bulb. So that particular temperature known as wet bulb. Then dew point, we'll discuss later these things. Dew point temperature at which condensation of moisture begins when air is cool. Then relative humidity. Quite unfortunately, relative humidity is not understood well. Very often, we mistake, we take moisture content as relative humidity. You know, we don't feel what it is. Let's see what it is. Definition, what is the definition? The ratio of actual water vapor pressure in the air to the water vapor pressure, that is partial water vapor pressure at saturation. So if I say again, partial water vapor pressure of air at room conditions to the saturation water vapor pressure so we don't understand what it is we'll have to go through this later so next one specific humidity that is called moisture content now we always mislead with this moisture content is how much of water vapor in one kilogram of dry air enthalpy of course we know what it is Quantity of heat in the air above a datum. Sensible heat factor, another term in psychometrics. Sensible heat over total heat. That is very significant thing. We'll discuss later. 
and finally alignment circle this alignment circle is required to do our processors we'll take it while we are doing it little bit of a history i won't take too much time this psychometrics were in the very olden days but most significant uh, improvement were done in 1950s stabilis h carrier who created the modern psychometric chart right now we'll have to discuss properties of psychometric psychometric is actually dealing with water vapor in the air that, that is what is psychometrics now the properties are dry bulb temperature wet bulb dew point relative humidity humidity ratio or moisture content specific volume and specific enthalpy we'll take one by one dry bulb temperature it is a ordinary thermometer it registers a certain temperature now in the psychometric chart it is shown on the vertical line but the scale is on horizontal x axis we'll go to that while we are doing the chart but just i am just showing 32 dry bulb is on the horizontal scale and the black vertical line gives you constant 32 dry bulb positions on the chart so dry bulb temperature is just a normal temperature reading of air and there's another component called wet bulb so this is wet bulb same thermometer same kind of thermometer with a cotton wick immersed in water now what happens water evaporates into air then latent of vaporization absorb and the temperature drops but air gets saturates with water vapor and sees this action that temperature is called wet bulb so on the psychometric chart it is shown on a angular line curves we'll come to that a little later on the psychometric chart right next important thing is dew point so much important this is what is dew point just try to remember what is dew point if you happen to wake up early in the morning a cool day for four o'clock or 4 30 just before the sunlight you would experience some dew forming on leaves how come is that somebody sprayed water now that is the temperature at which the condensation begins of water vapor so dew point now in the psychometric chart we draw a line horizontally until it intersects the saturation curve that is dew point at dew point dry bulb temperature wet bulb temperature all are same why it is so important i'll give you a few facts take a take a take a glass take a glass nice glass you put some uh, ice cubes suddenly you find condensation condensation if you keep it there will be water what what happened 
glass is broken. Oh, glass has tiny, tiny holes in it. No, no, no. What really happened was ice is at zero degrees C. Outside temperature is, let's say, that plus 32. But surface temperature now drops. Surface temperature drops below the dew point temperature of air. Below the dew point temperature of air. We'll just assume, we'll just assume dew point DP is 19 degrees C. But the surface, surface temperature drops, the glass surface temperature drops to 5C. What happens? Water vapor in the air, which we can't see, that will condense on the glass surface. This is so important. This is so important. I'll, get, I'll take another little example quickly. Take a refrigerator, your refrigerator, double do. I will take a blow up view here. Refrigerator section right here. This is inside, this is outside. Suddenly you find water vapor forming outside. What would be the cause? Inside minus four, outside 32 and 70 RH. What really has happened? The thermal insulation, this is thermal insulation. We'll, we'll imagine this is weakened and the minus four temperature. Now the surface also reaching minus four or dropping down. So the when the surface temperature that is right here, surface temperature drops below the dew point what will happen condensation will take place so you got to increase you got to increase your insulation or repair or replace but modern refrigerators what they have done they have inserted a gadget here a mullion heater now this is a heater mind you little heater it is not actually a heater, it can be discharge pipe of the refrigeration system. What it does, it keeps the surface warm right enough to go above the dew point temperature. And they call anti sweat heaters. So, dew point is so important. When you go to a, a supermarket, you go to a servo over, you, have, you can see servo overs, glass top curved glass now the glass should be kept clean how they have done they have another malian heater keep the glass curved glass surface temperature uh, just above the dew point temperature so there can't be any condensation so so many things that we can discuss about dew point so much important Next, humidity. What is humidity? Humidity is water vapor in the air. Really, it affects the comfort, as we know. Sometimes it affects the building furniture, equipment. Some worst cases, you find fungus, the molds, are growing bad for occupancy so some uh, some cases this relative humidity is kept at close control level without wearing too much like IT industry so humidity is so important basically for thermal comfort, we have to drop the humidity around 50-55 RH. That is relative humidity. Let's say. Now comes the relative humidity. 
you can see a hygrometer now this hygrometer has rh reading an additional dial give the give you the position whether it is high humidity or it is okay or it is low see see this gives okay green between 30 and 50 as a matter of fact ashray suggests ashray 55 suggests air condition areas the humidity should be kept within 30 and 60 and below 60. so definition which we couldn't understand partial pressure of water vapor in the air to the partial pressure of water vapor at saturation it is best understood Uh, it looks there is a power failure. So please be there. He is uh, resuming. Yeah, Channa, are you back? Okay. Yeah, Channa, are you back? Yeah, I'm back. Can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? Hope uh, you can, uh, everybody can hear me well. We'll... Uh, Go back to uh, relative humidity again. I'm sorry for the inconvenience cost. Now, we can understand better if we follow this little uh, chart. Of course, this is the psychometric chart. Well, we haven't studied that yet. But then, enough, this is called... Power went power. Can you hear me?
ఇలా ఓకే సాచురేషన్ కర్వ్ అండ్ డ్రై బల్బ్ టెంపరేచర్ అండ్ పార్షల్ ఫ్రెష్ వాటర్ వైపర్ ప్రెషర్ సో వాట్ వీఆర్ టాకింగ్ అబౌట్ హియర్ ఈస్ partial water vapor pressure at room conditions room temperature divide by partial pressure of water vapor at saturation the same temperature is called relative humidity to really understand we'll have to do some exercises with the chart you will understand Arun, then you will understand. Arun, something like if you heat air, RH will decrease. If you cool air, RH will increase. So we'll we'll do that. We'll do that. We'll go to a psychometric chart and then learn moisture content or humidity ratio. that is how much of water vapor in the air we say how much of water vapor in kilograms or grams per 1 kilogram of dry air now that is given in the psychometric chart on the vertical scale here when moisture is coming back we were discussing moisture now fog fog is what is something to do with something to do with moisture isn't it what is fog uh uh Chanda, can you go back? Yes. Chanda, can you go back? All right. That's what I asked you. What, what, they exactly where they missed. Okay. Where we cut, 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 cut off was somewhere here. Here. Okay. Uh, one more, one more, one more. Yeah, from here... Uh, next slide you can take it next slide next that's what next slide yeah this one okay yeah your uh, your voice is bit low can you just uh, increase yourself your volume or something uh check now now it's bit clear okay fine enough no problem we can move okay 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 right we were talking about relative humidity relative humidity is partial pressure of water vapor in the air to the partial pressure of water vapor at saturation which we don't understand much best way to uh, actually understand we'll have to go through the psychometric chart psychometric chart but then what you see here this is also psychometric chart do we can show you partial pressure of water vapor in the air at room temperature to the partial pressure of water vapor at saturation that is the ratio called relative humidity which we have to go through the psychometric chart to understand give example when room air is heated relative humidity decreases so that you got to learn it is not a normal phenomenon we don't understand it very funny when air is cooled rh increases so let's take next one moisture content in the air call humidity ratio that is straightforward it is the water vapor 
content or how, how much of water vapor in the air. It is given as kilogram per kilogram, kilogram of water vapor in one kilogram of dry air. That is given in uh, right side of the vertical column. We'll go to the next one. Fog. Now, fog also something to do with water vapor. What is fog? What is fog? Fog is when water vapor condenses into tiny liquid water droplets, which is carrying in the air, dense cloud. Now, the fog area where it is happening is shown in a psychometric chart. Right here, this hatched area is fog area. When dry bulb, wet bulb, and dew point temperatures are the same, the air is called saturated, that is, on the on the curve it can hold no moist no more moisture when it is saturated condition moisture enter in the air displaces moisture within the air and carries water vapor droplets so this is called fog the instrument that we use for psychometrics is a sling psychrometer this is a swivel thing you hold this part and rotate this. What happens? Cotton wick water is here. The wick evaporates water and drop the wet bulb temperature down to saturation and you get the wet bulb, dry bulb together. And you can read the RH on this slide rule. Now, we are going to discuss about the psychometric chart, but you see a ashray psychometric chart, its normal temperature, pressure sea level, and various components with the psychometric chart. Let's see how to get about this psychometric chart. I gave you a little time to go through this. There are a few scales. Horizontal scale is dry bulb temperature. You, you can see 20, 30, 40. The vertical lines are constant temperature lines, constant dry bulb, say 20 degrees here, 20 degrees here, 20 degrees here, all 20 degrees. So 20, 21, 23, 25, 30, 35, 40, all dry bulb temperatures. Then you have curved lines called relative humidity. The first curve at the edge is known as saturation curve, 100% RH. And here, 10%. This curve, 20, 30, 40, 50. Up here, 90 and 100. And then comes... Uh, low tangent lines, there are a lot of lines are going here. The lines, same lines, but terminating at the saturation curve. Those lines represent wet bulb. Easy way to find the wet bulb line 
the dry bulb is 20 when you go constant dry bulb when it is hitting the saturation curve dew point wet bulb and dry bulb are same so wet bulb temperature also now 20 and the line going down that is called the wet bulb line that is wet bulb line now if i give you a point to find say somewhere right here it is 30 degrees dry bulb and 20 degrees wet bulb and we can read 40 rh as as a matter of fact so there are some other lines say same same angle lines but going beyond the 100 percent curve those are enthalpy lines specific enthalpy kilojoules per kilogram and you read the value here those are also going on the same direction as with bulk then comes much more angular lines you can see these lines are specific volume specific volume you can read the specific volume right here 0 0.86 0 0.9 specific volume line these are constant specific volume lines 0.82 cubic meters per kilogram and then horizontal lines horizontal lines what are these horizontal lines When you read this horizontal line from a point somewhere here, let's say from here, if you go onto, onto your right, onto your right, the vertical scale is moisture content. Moisture content. This is moisture content. Now, in this ash phase psychometric chart, the units given here grams per kilogram of dry air, 12 grams per kilogram, or it is 0 0.012 kilograms per kilogram. So, moisture content, constant lines are here, point rather 12 grams per kilogram. 14 grams per kilogram, 22 grams per kilogram. So all this is moisture content. Then you would see something here, a curve, half a circle. That is sensible heat ratio. We'll construct that a little later and how to we, we, we use something to construct and uh, using this one later okay what we discussed about the psychometric chart dry bulb temperature scale is on horizontal and vertical lines represent the constant dry bulb temperatures okay that is very clear then the curved lines are relative humidity constant relative humidity angular lines there are two types large angle small angle small angle lines are wet bulb which is going above the saturation that is enthalpy lines constant enthalpy lines then larger angle the lines with the larger angle called specific volume then moisture content is on the vertical scale onto your left final thing people sometimes mislead dew point temperature if i talk to students out of 10 9 is misled in this point now dew point temperatures how to read dew point temperatures if you take a point somewhere here and horizontally if you 
go to left until you intersect the saturation curve that is dew point why we why we discuss all this about you might think oh this is very primitive these are these good for uh, academic purposes no in real terms for us to understand air conditioning you need psychometrics if i say a theoretical approach to air conditioning is psychometrics right we'll get to the other slide you can see you can see all what i said written here dry bulb temperature wet bulb temperature lines saturation saturation curve and relative humidity lines enthalpy lines of course similar to wet bulb and then specific volume lines and dew point to the right rather left again mistaken dew point to the right dew point to the left what i'm talking dew point to the left of uh, your your hand and uh, to the right is moisture content so people mislead here dew point you can't read directly you have to refer to a point and then come back to your left until you find the dew point you never read dew point on the saturation curve that is the that is the point if you want to read the dew point your your current state point draw a line to left until it intersects the saturation curve okay i think this is this is quite sufficient uh, everything what you see here we discuss here we'll take a little example of readings in different climates what you can see dry bulb wet bulb and rh readings on different climates colombo sri lanka in summer dry bulb is 33 wet bulb some sometimes go to 28 then rh is 68 chennai 38.5 slightly higher than not slightly it is really high dry bulb wet bulb almost same 28.3 but rh slightly lower 46 but then when you go to delhi we will understand something delhi dry bulb temperature is so high during summer 43.8 43.8 wet bulb is also higher 29.6 but rh is 36 see now we'll have to really understand the psychometric chart we'll have to be conversant so we'll have to go and see that properly London, for example, of course, London, dry bulb temperature 28, wet bulb 19, RH 50. It is like air conditioned environment outside. What I want to show you, the behavior of RH is different. The way the dry bulb temperature and wet bulb behaving. So 
So we'll go through this very carefully. Next one is an example we are going to do to understand the psychometric chart. 32 dry bulb, 27 wet bulb. What is the relative humidity, humidity ratio, and dew point? Let's see. Again, 32, 27. So 32 dry bulb, we locate 32 dry bulb, draw a straight line. And wet bulb, you locate 27 and draw a line where it intersects is the state point. It is the state point. Now you can read RH, where RH line intersects. It is about 68, very approximately. To find the dew point from the state point, you go straight left until it intersects the curve. 25.4 dew point. Moisture content, you go right. 20.5 grams per kilogram dry air. Now what we can understand here, when the dry bulb 32, 27 wet bulb, outdoor air dew point is 25. So anything, any surface below 25 degrees C, there will be condensation on the surface. Simple as that. We'll take a, we'll take a duct carrying air at 10 degrees C outside can it be exposed to outside that duct? No, because the dew point is very high. The surface is low, below the dew point. So there will be condensation. Then what we need? We need thermal insulation. Then thermal insulation, how do you do that? We'll, we'll tackle that as well as here, as, as when we are here. Now, thermal insulation, you can select thermal conductivity and the thickness. To find the thickness, what do you do? The minimum thickness required to have the surface about 25 degrees C. Ah, that's how we decide the thermal insulation because we have the dew point. That is the importance of dew point. Dew point temperature is known then you know the surface has to be above the dew point to prevent condensation. So thermal, the, the thermal insulation, thickness is calculated, economical thickness to prevent condensation. Okay, another example. 30 degrees dry bulb, 40 RH. Find the wet bulb. What we do? We draw a straight line from 30 straight line where it intersects the 40 rh then we can find all the other properties as a matter of fact all the other proper properties wet bulb is 20 then you can find moisture content approximately 11 grams per one kilogram then enthalpy is about 58 kilojoules per kilogram then specific volume specific volume it is 0.88 this is 0 0.84 5 6 7 0 0.874 cubic meters per kilogram so you can find everything. Okay, we'll take another example. Given 15 degrees C dry bulb and 12 wet bulb, find moisture content and their therapy. Sorry. 
No, this is wrong. This is uh, 15C, 12. You go right, you hit the moisture content scale. 20.8 grams per kilogram. Enthalpy. You, you do this way. It is about 86 kilojoules per kilogram. Chandra, Chandra, at which height number you are? I'm at uh, uh, 27. 27. Can you go back? Yeah, this is. So, but your uh, dry bulb line is 32 degrees C, you are showing, but given for 15 and 12. No, okay. no, 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 no. No, 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 no. That is that's why I, I read it. It should be twelve. It should be twelve. It is a slight uh, a mistake here, and this is twelve. Okay, now you would see correctly. Fifteen. No, it's fifteen. 15, again. 15 yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's okay. But the other values are correct. Come back again. Fifteen degrees dry bulb. And 12 degrees, how to read the moisture content this way, enthalpy that way. So, we have just gone through the psychometric chart. Now, there are psychometric processes. I told you before, air conditioning system itself is a it's a mixture of three psychometric, actually, three psychometric processes. So we need to go through these psychometric processes. What you can see here. There are different psychometric processes these, these, these lines represent. Will you believe that? Such a different processes? Yes. We'll take one by one. Just go through this first. First one is OA, going horizontally to left. is called sensible cooling. You got to remember all these words, sensible, cooling. If you can remember all of these, then only you can really understand the air conditioning system. So these are the basics. OA, sensible cooling. OB, going down this way, 45 degrees down or any degree. OB is cooling, cooling. And dehumidification. We'll discuss in depth. OC, dehumidification. Opposite of humidification. This is dehumidification. OD, OD is heating and dehumidification. OE, sensible heating. OF, this way. OF, heating and humidification. And OG, heating and uh, OG, OG is just humidification. Opposite is dehumidification, OG is humidification, adding moisture. We'll take one by one and then we'll go through it carefully. Sensible cooling. Sensible cooling process. That is O8 in that diagram. What you can see in the psychometric chart, a horizontal line, one and two, it is starting from two to one. Obviously, point two is around 40 degrees, one is around 20 degrees C, so it is cooling. Obviously, the process two to one 
is represent cooling process because it is decreasing temperature if you go this way. But the significance is this line is horizontal. Then what happens? No change in moisture content. W1 equal W2 in right here. Moisture content is 7 grams per kilograms. W1, W2 both same. W represents moisture content. So sensible cooling shown in the straight line starting here end up at this place one horizontal line dry bulb temperature t2 is end up at t1 moisture content w1 w2 same we can see the wet bulb as well wet bulb wet bulb here maybe 20 uh, 23 wet bulb has decreased to 15 same lines you can see the enthalpy it is about 65 kilojoules per kilogram has dropped to 40 kilojoules per kilogram. So sensible cooling, enthalpy is decreasing, temperature is decreasing, moisture content remains same. But very significantly relative humidity, what has happened? That is very important. Relative humidity at the start is exactly 15 RH. When you cool it, RH increases. 15 RH, 20 RH, 30 RH, 40 RH. My goodness, it is 50 RH. So cooling means relative humidity increasing. Now that you'll have to put it to your head. Whenever cooling takes place, it is RH increasing. But the significance of this cooling, this particular cooling, horizontal line, moisture content constant, it has an important name, sensible cooling. Sensible cooling. We call sensible very, very important. That means no latent part. Latent cooling is zero. Only sensible. Then it has to go straight. We'll go to properties and see. T dry bulb 2 is greater than T dry bulb 1. Correct? T wet bulb 2 is greater than T wet bulb. But RH2 smaller than RH1. RH2 smaller than RH1. Moisture contents remain same. Enthalpy H2 is higher. H1 is small. Of course, we have given off heat or what happened? H1, H2, what has happened? No, 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 no. H2 is higher. H1 is smaller. So H2 is higher. H1 is smaller. Yes, we have given off. Then specific volume. Specific volume also H2, Vs2 is larger. Yes. So this is how it looks like for sensible cooling. When I'm explaining the rest, I will go a little faster. But now sensible cooling means no latent happening. So normal air conditioner. Is it sensible cooling? Well, no, not really, because your cooling coil is wet. All the water vapor condensed and the condensate is taken out. So there's latent cooling happening. But this is sensible cooling only. How it is? How it is happening? What is the prime, prime important thing? for sensible cooling. Coil surface temperature. Coil surface temperature. 
coil surface temperature should be above the dew point temperature of air above the dew point temperature of air coil surface going below dew point it will start so example is example is active chill beam active chill beam now active chill beams have a cooling coil although we have get uh, condition yeah, also because it is active beam a cooling coil is kept above the dew point temperature of air so no condensation will take place so what we learned is sensible cooling always no dehumidification taking place moisture content remains same so this is happening in in our air conditioning process sometimes so that's so, so we've got to be very careful we should learn these things next sensible heating what you see is a hot water coil heating right opposite of sensible cooling it is straight one to two t1 is about 20 degrees c end up at 42 44 so it is heating but most significant factor is moisture content remains same similar so nothing happens to latent part so this is called sensible heating this is also sometimes in the air conditioning system we require this why why the important thing just see the relative humidity starting point relative humidity is about very roughly how much is that 50 rh now this is about at the end is about 15 rh what has happened when you sensibly heat rh drops oh when you heat sensibly rh drops so this is really used in our air conditioning system whenever we want lower rh we'll have to heat it we'll have to heat it mind you you cool it and then heat it somebody might say oh, you are crazy you cool and then you need heat yeah you got to do that because you need low rh so the rest of the psychometric points similar specific thing is your rh decreases when heating next one humidification humidification is just adding moisture you don't have a process like that when you add moisture without changing the temperature is called humidification if you remove more water vapor from air under constant temperature it will become dehumidification so i don't go through that much next one a line representing angular line going to left of it that is the most most important process that has given a name that has given a name what is it cooling and due humidification how obviously if if you go this way it is cooling because 50 40 30 this is cooling okay if you go this way we call dehumidification removing moisture then the resultant if you go this way you call cooling and dehumidification okay right you are with me now we'll take an example air at point one cooled 
and then dehumidify it. We show it straight line like this. What has happened? Most significant thing is relative humidity. RH, 50 RH is increased, increased, increased and the 90 RH. Oh, moisture content, what has happened? Moisture content, 14 grams per kilogram has dropped to 9. Enthalpy reduced. 65 to 35. Wet bulb. Wet bulb. 22. Now it is 12. Specific volume is 0.87 to 0.82. Okay. Now practically, if we are to con uh, draw this line practically, how do we do that? The angle of this line is given from sensible heat ratio. We are going to do that later. That is sensible heat divided by total heat. We'll just assume it is 0 0.7. Point seven. So what we do, we'll draw the we will we'll find 0.7 on this protractor. Say 0.7, let's say 0.7 is somewhere here. This 0.7. We draw a parallel line from this line. There is a very specific gadget here. A dot alignment circle. We draw a parallel line through that alignment circle from here to here now this is the now this is the this is what this is the sensible heat ratio line now we can superimpose this draw a parallel line to wherever you draw from here to here or if you can draw a parallel line exactly so that's how you construct this line later we can see what it is so what we got here cooling and dehumidification temperature drops dry bulb bed bulb but something going to increase that is RH rest of the things all drops when cooling and dehumidification take place relative humidity increases so this is the process in the air conditioner summer cooling this is the process of summer cooling when air goes through the cooling coil okay we'll take the next one heating and humidification straight away look at this photograph Why I have put a photograph like this? There's no cooling coil, heating coil. We'll come to that later. So our heading is heating and humidification process. Heating and adding water vapor. Heating this way. Adding water this way. The resultant has to go this way. Oh, that's correct. It is going right towards up that represent the heating and humidification while heating is taking place it is humidified moisture content increases moisture content increases so in this what you learn relative humidity decreases moisture content increases what kind of a process is this anybody can guess It is when air comes into contact 
fit room people lights and computers that what will happen that's why this photograph this is heating and humidification you see the participants now you are i can say you all you all you all you are a 100 watt bulb each each person is a 100 watt bulb because we emit 100 watt almost but really you are not a 100 watt bulb you are, you are a boil 100 watt boil why you emit sensible heat and latent so all this load is with humidification also so in process what happened cold air enters the room picks up heat and humidity becomes heating and humidification process rh decreases next cooling and humidification cools and humidify what is that cool of course you have to go this way if it is dehumidifying goes this way and result and this way which we discussed that is cooling and dehumidification but here cools okay and humidification this way oh god the resultant goes this way so it is rightly showed in the psychometric chart from here it's going why i have given three examples one is purple line but the red line coincident the wet bulb lights blue line above the wet bulb line anyway so all are cooling and humidification what the big deal process temperature t1 is greater than t2 t dry bulb 2b why it is cooling i'm going to take this i'm going to take this now cooling red color line temperature dry bulb decreases wet bulb slightly decreases or increases or what no wet bulb is constant because it is on the wet bulb line as a matter of fact enthalpy also not changing wet bulb is not changing enthalpy is not changing this is called adiabatic cooling adiabatic cooling without changing the it won't absorb heat neither reject so call adiabatic cooling known as evaporative cooling or in your country desert coolers the significance is when you start cooling the temperature drops to be t just just evaporate some water into air the resultant is dry bulb decreases that is great but quite unfortunately the 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 temperature not reach the dew point or bed bulb temperature because this is not 100 percent efficient effectiveness about 80 percent so you end up you end up somewhere here this should have been end up here so you achieve this temperature evaporative cooling water evaporated air evaporative cooling you can see these things in india not in colombo though because our rh is high maybe good for dubai i don't know rh again a problem sometimes this is the evaporative cooler evaporative cooler a simple gadget there are air intake sides 
four sides maybe each side has a grill with a a little filter where filter is sent water on top of it filter is soaked so air is pushing through the filters evaporating into air air will cool theoretical temperature drop is wet bulb temperature if i if i tell you uh, this is 35 degrees c theoretically you can end up here 21 22 23 degrees c you can achieve 23 degrees c you can achieve theoretically but it never happens probably you end up at 27 27 c so it is it is a great advantage if you promote cooling and humidification process in dry places first you achieve little cooling number two you achieve higher humidity that is comfortable in that climate otherwise it will be very dry next heating and dehumidification final one heating and humidification again what is heating and humidification heating heating has to go this way dehumidification has to this way so the resultant has to go this way okay this is the process heating and humidification chemical dehumidifiers chemical dehumidifiers the chemical dehumidifying is shown in the curved line. While the biggest advantage you have moisture content is going down. You remove water vapor. With chemical dehumidifiers, you remove very low RH. So to safeguard equipment, you have chemical dehumidifiers. Sometimes production of pharmaceutical items, you need low dehumidification, which cannot achieve from normal air conditioning. You need chemical dehumidifiers. So finally, that is heating and dehumidification. So we have found interesting psychometric processes. The final one is called air mixing. Two air samples mixed together, assuming there is no losses, gains. It follow this equation. That is stream one, dry bulb temperature into mass flow rate. Stream two, dry bulb temperature in the, into mass flow rate of stream two. Divide by mass flow rates total now air mixing happens in the air conditioning system outdoor air return air mixed together air mixing happening there when air passes through a cooling coil as you know all the air particles never in contact with the cooling coil there will be a bypass. So bypassed air and the contact air will again mix after the cooling coil. So air mixing, we need to know that is with air conditioning. Okay, so now we have learned basic psychometric processes. It is high time to apply this to air conditioning system a true air conditioning system will apply actually psychometrics main use of psychometric is to find the coil conditions also to design various other processes i'll give you an example here this is a building air condition this building is in chennai 
जैसे एयर कंडीशन है कूलिंग लोड इज कैरीड आउट कूलिंग लोड इज 16 दैट रादर 26.5 किलोवाट टोटल एंड 16.5 किलोवाट सेंसिबल If you followed my webinar last week, we did cooling load calculations. I told that, that sensible heat is so important in a cooling load calculation. Why? Sensible heat is used to calculate the supply of flow rate. Reason: When you analyze the cooling load in this room, cooling load comprises of sensible heat. and latent heat what is latent heat latent heat is moisture so this load which is absorbed in the air conditioner comprises of sensible heat and latent heat but i told you when you analyze very carefully sensible heat of course in the room but quite unfortunately not the sensible heat then what is sensible heat what i am telling you is there is no sensible heat inside the room then then what the big deal but you got to remember what is inside is only moisture only moisture not latent heat what happens this moisture go back to the air conditioner and the cooling coil it will be condensed back to the water there this latent heat part applies so latent heat is available in the coil not in the evaporator so the air we send to the room to absorb heat we don't need large amount of heat air to send it to the room to absorb both no we are sending only required to absorb sensible heat because latent heat directly applying to the cooling coil so now in this case we are going to learn how to calculate the supply i also so therefore the sensible capacity is of utmost importance okay going back we have got a building in chennai a lecture room 50 people area 115 square meters room conditions to be maintained 24c dry bulb 17 wet bulb outdoor air is 38.5 28.3 wet bulb we have a true air conditioning system what do you mean by true air conditioning true air conditioning system always has extract always have outdoor air always have supply air always have return air so if a air conditioning system have all these four items we call true air conditioning system i'm very sorry to tell you that the, the air conditioner that you are rightly enjoying the high wall split that system is not a true air conditioning system that is just a air conditioning system okay so we have we need to have all these four basic components right cooling capacity 26.5 total 16.5 sensible 50 people we are supposed to calculate entering and leaving conditions of the coil and supply air volume okay we'll take a tour how to do this remember we have given indoor conditions and outdoor conditions straight away we can plot these in our psychometric chart indoor point point here 24c 50rh point 
and then the other point 38.5 23.5 number one is number two and we can draw a line connecting these two that is the first step second step nothing else that we can do but remember we have given can you remember we were given total capacity sensible so then we can find the room sensible heat ratio or room sensible heat factor both same that is sensible heat divided by total heat 16.5 divided by 23.5 26.5 so we have done a little mistake but we'll we'll keep 2.7 i have already done so let's imagine this is 0.7 what is the sensible heat ratio line is 0.7 so we draw 0.7 line through our room conditions that line is this you draw a straight line intersecting saturation curve well, this is so important now what are we going to find we are going to find entering leaving conditions first next step we are going to assume one thing a quite uh, sensible assumption what you can see is your cooling coil what happens cooling coil when air passes through condensation 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 actually coil is almost flooded with water vapor so we do a little assumption always air leaves the cooling coil saturated so that is a fair assumption because it's water so the air leaves carries the water so it is almost saturated so we assume air leaves at 90 rh now if you can do that assumption if you go back to the other one if you can do that assumption you have rh line 90 if that intersects this sensible ratio line that is this one that point we can read 10.7 dry bulb wet bulb 9.8 we call that point coil leaving temperature coil leaving temperature coil leaving temperature what we did what we did we found the room sensible heat ratio draw a room sensible heat ratio line through the room point until it intersects the curve we do assumption coil leaving at 90 rh this is the point so we found one thing coil leaving now coil leaving temperature or off coil is 10.7 9.8 10 10.7 good proceed next step we have given a equation t3 go back go back and find what is 3 t t3 t3 is 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 the mixing actually this is entering this is leaving of course leaving we have just found you go to find the entering when i say entering conditions you remember air mixing outdoor air mix with room air so we can use entering mixing air equation that's why i'm going to use this equation now i'm going to use this equation t3 equals t1 m1 plus t2 m2 divided by m1 m2 can I do this? Let's say, let's say T1, T1 
one is outdoor air temperature we have t2 room temperature we have m1 outdoor air mass flow rate oh god what are we talking mass flow rate Oof. we'll have to find volume flow rate and then mass flow rate m1 fresh air do we have yeah we can remember vaguely we were given 50 people is it 50 people and uh, and the area if i if i quickly cross back 50 people area 150 115 area actually we can now find the volume flow rate of fresh air there's an equation v b z we we did that last lesson number of people into rate per person plus area into rate per area we can find the fresh air volume but we don't need to find that but we can use a simple figure 50 people 8 liters per second for our calculation 400 liters per second so we can find m1 m2 is mass flow rate of supply air no we can't find that because we don't know we dot at this moment we don't know that we are supposed to find that then only we can find them out so what we are going to do now we are first going to find of course we we can't use this t3 equation straight away because although we know m1 we don't know m2 now we are going to find m2 simple equation q equal mcp delta t always m dot equal volume flow rate divided by specific volume one upon specific volume specific volume vs can be replaced with one upon r so m dot equal v dot and rho now we can use rho we come to that later here q equals mcp delta t we have replaced m dot with this one specific volume into we can do that we can do that so what what is your equation or we should know rho rho is available we can find exactly what is rho or we can find exactly what is vs but rho is 1.02 now equation looks now if we if we put v dot that is volume flow rate up here and q the other side q divided by rho v cp delta t q is sensible heat okay divided by rho 1.2 actually cp 1.02 and delta t now we found fortunately the living conditions here this delta t some people mistakenly put outside minus inside no wrong this is room temperature minus living temperature so you end up at 0.9628 cubic meters per second so this is the volume flow rate 
and we can find the supply are leaving here vs that vs 0 0.814 when you divide by 0 0.914 you go back and see we have given that in the all right 0.814 yes 0.814 specific volume is 0.814 because I have changed these things very regularly. Anyway, this is correct. We have found the M dot of, of supplier. So we have found this one. So now we can find a T3. We straight away go to that equation. We can find T3. At the same time, we'll have to find the M1 that is specific volume of outdoor air. We assume eight liters per second per person, 50 people, right? So you end up at, with the specific volume. We divide specific volume. What is, what is this specific volume? That is specific volume of supply, uh, fresh air. This one, 0 0.899. 0 0.89, so 90. So we end up at 0 0.44. Now we can do this equation. How? M1, M, M1 is 0.44. M2 is 1.18. Previously we did. So we now found T3 that is entering temperature on coil. So we can put this back to the graph. How 28, this is 28. You draw a straight line until it intersect this, this line. We find the T3. That is 28 and 19 C weight bulb. So we have then found on coil temperature also. So basically we found the coil conditions using psychometrics. So this is coil leaving conditions previously found. This is on coil temperature. These two things are accurately required by the HU manufacturer. So this is the specification of air conditioner. Total cooling capacity, cooling load, sensible cooling load, sensible heat ratio, coil conditions on off, supply air volume, outdoor air volume. If we take air conditioning cycle, but assuming there are no losses, heat gain and heat addition to the system, the entire cycle looks like this. From point one, into mix at three, comes back to leaving condition here and enters the room absorbing room heat becomes the coil conditions here so here one point here one point here one point here one point so these what are these points this is room this outdoor air. mixing or entering entering coil Cooling and humidification and leaving coil. What is this? The line which we drew for, it is not important, but 
actually what I meant here, this blue color line, this coil temperature line hits the cooling uh, the saturation curve called apparatus dew point. I will come to that later. I will come to that later. So, importantly, cooling air conditioning cycle, summer cooling cycle, has three processes air mixing process, cooling and dehumidification process, and heating and humidification process. See how nice is that? Again, air mixing cooling and dehumidification and heating mind you heating and humidification inside the room now actual cycle if you take the actual cycle it is complex but we'll consider one thing If we consider fan heat and duct heat gain of supply air. Now this is the supply condition. See what has happened. From supply condition, line goes straight. Sensible heating. Oh my god. This is sensible heating. Why? Due to fan heat and duct heat. Because the HU has a fan that emits heat. Supply duct emits heat, but rather uh, transfer heat into the air. So that is shown here as a straight line called sensible heating. Then only it en enters the cooling coil. Right, so now I'm going to show you very quickly the coil load and room load. How do we calculate? Now, this is room load, that is room line, delta H. This is the delta H of room, enthalpy difference of room. This is the room line. Delta H into mass flow rate is the capacity. We can find the capacity from here. This is room. This is room load. Similarly, coil load. Now this one, large one, coil load. Enthalpy difference into mass flow rate. And to, to end this process, the air conditioning process, I have given you this from Ashray uh, publication. A complex summer cooling cycle. No, it is not that complex, but what's happening? Can you see sensible heating? Sensible heating happening. Why? This is supply fan and supply plenum duct heat gain. Enters the room. Return air. Oh God, this return fan, return duct, return plenum. That also has a heat addition but you got to remember the coil this is the coil process and this is the coil load coil has to coil has to remove total heat including mind you these things so you have to minimize sensible heat gains in supply and return this is the actual cycle of summer cooling We are coming to uh, the latter part of it. We'll finish quickly, but uh, these are so important. Apparatus dew point. It is nothing but coil dew point. We, we discussed that. Requirement, coil dew point should be barely below the room temperature. That is obvious. Anybody will understand that what will happen, a glass, empty glass, shining glass, when you put some ice cubes, outer surface sweating because the glass surface temperature dropped below the dew point. So condensation take place. So if you need cooling and humidification process, you are 
coil surface should be below the dew point temperature of entering air. So apparatus dew point therefore so important. I'm going to show you some important fact. This is uh, mostly people will miss. To maintain indoor design conditions of 2450 RH, Again, to maintain indoor design conditions 2450 RH, coil dew point should be below 13 C. Who has said that? How come is that? If chill water return increase, chill water return, supply here, return. Chill water return increases above 13 C, the room conditions. See what happens? A chiller, a chiller, this is a chiller. A chiller has entering, leaving. Entering chill water, leaving chill water. We call entering 54, leaving 44 Fahrenheit. 6.2, 12.7 or 7.12. Who has given this? Anybody, any gold has given this? Or somebody has preached? Or maybe Mr. Wheelie said carrier would have given that. No, 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 no. That is a psychometric detail. Look at this. This is room conditions. What is room conditions are 2450. It is right here. If you find the dew point at room condition is that is 13 C that is 13 C if the room has to be maintained 2450 RH dew point is 13 they are dew point then obviously your cooling coil has to be maintained below 13 that means your leaving chill water temperature should be below 13 as a matter of fact that's why we keep this enter in 7 leaving 12 somebody might say we have high delta t and various things but if you keep return temperature up that will affect room rh How this seven came? It is Mr. Willis carrier said. No, that is the practical limit. You know, chiller outlet, the minimum is 4.5 C before freezing. Of course, we can run it at five, very, very dangerous, but we can run five. Seven, definitely safe. What we learned, the apparatus dew point is so important. And if you change the apparatus dew point, if the apparatus dew point goes up, means you never be able to maintain the room conditions, especially RH. Because thermal comfort will have to comply that thermal comfort. Dry bulb can be 25. Of course, 50, you can go up to 55 RH. But you got to remember. We are complying ASHRAE standard 55. That is, that is, there's a limit thermal comfort. Thermal comfort limit. What is thermal comfort limit? 0.5 satisfaction, uh, the point, it should be between 0.5, point, minus 0.5, plus 0.5. Comfort criteria. To do that, your RH should be maximum 55. Dry bulb maybe maximum 26. So, apparatus dew point is so much important. Bypass factor. We can calculate the bypass factor like this. This is the coil line. 
can you see the coil line red line temperature apparatus viewpoint temperature leaving temperature entering so a divided by b is bypass factor bypass factor is how much of air bypass in the cooling coil higher the bypass factor we are not using the cooling coil much your dehumidification is less higher the contact factor smaller the bypass factor contact is so much your dehumidification is very good so how do you find bypass factor equals temperature leaving dry bulb is this much my uh, sorry temperature leaving dry bulb minus apparatus dew point divide by temperature entering dry bulb minus apparatus dew point we can see in this table typical bypass factors used and the fin spacing as you know you are in the field normal cooling coils dx coils are 14 fins per inch if you are a refrigeration guy you jolly well know you can't have 14 fins in your operator if it is going for low temperature it depends on uh, uh, defrosting whether it is hot gas bypass or electric now electric defrosting you can have eight fins per inch spacing large spacing because there will be ice now in this case without spray cooling coils depth of the row higher the row bypass factor getting smaller and smaller this is with eight fins this is with 14 fins what why eight fins we sometimes go for eight fins in air conditioning in 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 areas we are dealing with uh, much of particulate matter high particulate matter otherwise it, if 14 fins is used normal coils very quickly coils will blocked so we specify eight fins per inch to minimize the clogging of your operator so you would see higher the depth of the row higher the normally dx refrigerate refrigeration coils are two rows with 14 fins chill water four rows six rows all outdoor are eight rows and ten rows okay this is the application a small total load air conditioners with low sensible heat factor little high latent load for residences small air conditioners 0 0.3 to 0 0.5 0.2 to 0 0.3 retail 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 typical comfort application we, we normally take 0.15 bypass factor and applications uh, restaurants factories large amount of outdoor air for ventilation 0 0.05 0 0.1 all outdoor air 0 to 0.1 so with this you know what to select how much of depth of rows so therefore bypass factor is pretty much important coming back to latent heat high latent load applications there are high latent load applications available like auditoriums banquet halls if you are if you are if you are doing cooling load calculations you would you would rather have experience when you do the cooling load suddenly you find your supply air is very small usually you get 8000 liters per second this time you have 4000 liters per second something somewhere wrong so you go back and see 
what is the sensible heat ratio ah uh, sens sensible heat ratio is smaller because of high latent so practically what happens is this room line and cooling coil line never meets intersects together like in the previous case why how like like in the previous case earlier what happens it was like this it intersects somewhere here now if i draw this uh, room line like this now the room line is like this see it won't intersect so what we are going to do from the leaving we'll have to sensibly heat until it intersects so this is called reheating oh we need reheating with high latent loads now reheating is another question because nowadays electricity usage energy is a problem so heating in air conditioning system with electric current is almost prohibited discouraged by even ashray standards instead we use some other gadgets like heat exchangers heat pipe or face bypass face and bypass dampers let's see this is the simplest way very simplest way you have a heating coil upstream of the cooling coil you just cool and dehumidify it and then heat that is called reheating but discouraged because of energy okay now you have got another gadget heat pipe now this is return there and this is supplier and this is coil cooling coil you have a heat pipe it is a heat pipe continuous pipe with refrigerant what it does what it does it picks up heat from the return and put it back from the other plate after the cooling coil you call heat pipe i have personally used this in sri lanka absolutely stunning energy input is zero the project that i have done for passive house rating that building was world number 2 building that we had large heat pipe systems to reduce energy in reheating next one is face and bypass dampers face and bypass dampers this was a very very primitive method early days you have return air comes cooling coil there's a segment for bypass normal normal cooling return air goes through this way but you can bypass here i will draw this is blue and this is red why this hot air will now mix with cold air to give reheat this is this is known as face and bypass dampers why it is so significant zero energy input nowadays it is so much important finally two things to discuss that is the end high sensible heat applications i wonder whether you have had experience with the psychometric chart in this what is high sensible heat applications right i'm going to i'm going to draw this uh, uh, line angle line it has a portion 
uh, like this and a portion like this. Now this is all about sensible heat and this is all about latent heat. So it is divided, this one, horizontal portion showing sensible heat, vertical portion shows the latent. So this is the sensible heat ratio line, this angle, you have sensible and latent both. If this line, if I draw like this, you don't have sensible heat, only latent. Am I correct? Yes, only latent. If you draw this line straight, and you don't have latent at all, only sensible. That is what has happened here. This is the actual process of IT room precision air conditioners. Because precision air conditioners, we don't have fresh air, fresh outdoor air, no water vapor inside, no people. Completely sensible heat. Sensible heat ratio is 0.9 or 1. So the entire process looks like straight line. From 4 to 1, 4 to 1 is coil process. So delta H coil 4 to 1. And then a little bit of reheating, and then comes the leaving the fan, supplier fan outlet to the room. So it's straight. So what is the significance of high sensible heat applications? Why, why it is high sensible? Now comfort cooling is about 250 watts per square meter. 250 watts per square meter. But a server room. 5,000 watts per square meter. Example, 10, uh, uh, 10 by 10 rooms, square, uh, square, uh, 10 feet by 10 feet. You have uh, 15 people. Each person emit 100. 1.5 kilowatts load. Whereas this 10 by 10, you have uh, five servers, each 4 kilowatt, 20 kilowatts. 20 kilowatt against 1.5 kilowatts. That is the high density heat, IT. So all sensible, high sensible heat application. Finally, it comes, okay, little bit, IT cooling. You have seen this, these are the racks. For your knowledge, I thought I would share a, this desired condition inside 22 plus or minus one and 50 plus or minus 5% RH, so this is close control. Typical supply air, if it is uh, flow discharge downward, 14 degrees C, return temperature 24. That is for IT cooling, this high sensibility application. Then all outdoor air application. What do you mean by all outdoor air? That is a psychometric process. Now, I will again draw our normal comfort air conditioning system. It is like this. It is like this. This is coil process. This is room process. This is outdoor air. Now, there is no return in all outdoor air. All outdoor air means 100% pressure and all other rejected. The return is rejected to exhaust. So outdoor air is going through, completely going through the cooling coil and has to be ready to discharge in the room. So huge load. Now it is not here. Now it is from here. Ah. So all outdoor applications, the cooling coil should be very much bigger to handle complete outdoor air and it has to cool down to 10 degrees or whatever, 8 degrees C straight away because no return air. Usually coil, coils are two to three times larger, the capacity also same. No return, everything is exhausted. Where we have all outdoor air? Yeah? 
operating theaters, ICUs, critical care. 100% outdoor air. Filtered and cooled, dehumidified before entering the OT. All room air exhausted, creating positive pressure in the OT. Less than the supply, so positive. Usually 25 Pascal against the dirty linen. Supply air is not like comfort cooling. What is comfort supply? How? Is a diffuser. It's a duct, flexible duct. Air comes. How how it it goes like this. Principal air mixing. Principal air mixing. What will happen? Turbulent. No, that is bad for operating theater. If there are particulate matter in the room that will agitate that will agitate no what we do we send air in a streamline laminar flow and collected at the bottom so psychometrics the large coil three times the large larger coil we require not even that you need special refrigeration system to prevent freezing of the coil for gas bypass capacity control for evaporator so many things so that is about all fresh air applications so we have discussed so many uh, psychometric applications um, basics we need psychometrics for air conditioning otherwise we can't design the psychometry system know the we can't design the cooling coil hope you have got something from this seminar if you have questions uh, there's time now thank you very much Chandra. Uh, quite a detailed uh, presentation so i'll take uh, uh, the hundreds of questions flowing I'll take some selective questions. So, hmm, very interesting. Uh, currently in Dubai, outdoor conditions of fresh air handling units, air intake are being specified as 34-32. Whereas, it used to be 46 and 30. No, no, the first one is 34 and 32, okay. No, now, since almost, uh, because I was in Dubai, Almost uh, six years yeah. back, they changed the Dubai municipality has changed the standard for fresh air handling unit. Earlier, it used to be 46 degrees and 30 degrees. Actually, it no, is no, not that, 30. That, that, that is, I, yeah. I, I would, uh, uh, no, no, uh, just go ahead. Just go ahead. Yeah. It should not be 30 degrees. It should be 46 degrees and 30 percent RH. Now they follow 34 ah. degrees and 32 degrees wet bulb. So, uh, uh, what is the reason he wants to know? Actually, uh, for this, the best uh, thing will be to follow the X ray temperature guidelines. If, uh, Chandra, uh, you remember, you have a. I, I do have that on my screen. Yeah. So, can you give me that? Well, what, uh, I'm do, what, what I'm doing is uh, while, while you are talking, I am going through the psychometric uh, uh, this thing uh, to find with this 32 32 wet bulb you said the huh? 32 wet bulb. Yeah, I will, so I, I will just share. Uh, no, no, Chandra, this, yeah, I have uh, shared this now. Uh, actually, this yeah, is the okay. uh, right, MC, right. uh, MCWB of uh, Dubai. See, uh, for to design the fresh air handling unit, you need to go for the dehumidification guidelines of x-ray right Chandra? Okay. so which is okay. mcw db 33.2 and view point is 29.2 so these conditions oh. should be used for the fresh air handling unit and that data is coming from here if i am not wrong okay uh, put, put that back again i will 
yeah 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 now uh i'll tell you uh see what we normally uh, we we were doing we just take the temperature reading outside dry bulb and wet bulb and uh, oh. we are trying to size the air conditioner as example uh, 34 32 uh, we are talking about that 34 dry bulb and 32 wet bulb uh we say that is wrong why not we go for 46 uh dry bulb and 40 rh now reason ashe uh, says you see uh, these values are found uh, experimenting 10 year data cycle and 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 furthermore uh, if you design a system for the peak load it is utterly waste of capacity energy but but uh, reservation is there for countries like dubai and uh, the the the, uh, the 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 hot and humid countries very hot countries uh what happened is uh, uh, uh you, you better to have more cooling and uh, go for peak that is i understand but what actually says is don't go for peak load now in this chart come back to that chart uh, again uh, uh, rajat uh, okay wha- wha- what they have done what they have done they have given for dehumidification a set of temperature wet bulb dry bulb and dew point cooling separately and evaporation separately uh, people understanding uh, air conditioning i will start from here now there are 0.4 1% 2% what what is what are these 2% occurrences in the year so we'll have to get 2% under 2% column we'll have to use for air conditioning dry bulb 40 coincident mean coincident wet bulb 24 so somebody might say look what i talking 40 dry bulb then uh, wet bulb is not 4 uh, 24 wet bulb is not 24 wet bulb is uh, 29 no but when this is 40 coincident otherwise you are, you are you are having your air conditioner bigger and bigger so similarly when come to dehumidification if you go for 2% occurrences 2% percent occurrences so mean coincident dry bulb is taken as 33 humidity ratio at uh, 24 and, and then uh, dew point 28 so we don't uh, we don't take but but the, but the same question actually when i went to uh, abu dhabi i think i was uh, you were with me uh, so many uh, participants came to me and told me what, what 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 how did you get these temperatures abu dhabi i said this from uh, these tables they were laughing well, come on these temperatures are very different to that in fact i conveyed this to ashray too is a high time to change if necessary next question please yeah so uh, one gentleman asked for how we can avoid the condensation on window glass and air devices so simple due it's related to dew point temperature yeah it is uh, can i can i use my uh, yeah, yeah i will do Yeah. Yes. condensation condensation on glasses the walls is a very uh, uh, common uh, situation in humid countries even sri lanka uh, you may not uh, find a straight answer for that there are so many so many uh, ways it could happen now basic basic thing any surface to condense water vapor one thing the surface temperature should be below the dew point of air 
Now that has to happen, otherwise it should never happen unless somebody throw a bucket of water. Or otherwise, unconditioned air is hitting, again it is higher dew point, uh, unconditioned air is hitting a surface. Still dew point is lower. Now I, I'll, gi I'll give a classic example for that. Um, I will go to another page and I will write, okay. Um, just a second, I will. Okay, I will give you an example. Uh, what you can see, this is a ceiling. And this is a diffuser. And this is a flexible duct. Suddenly, you find dripping here. Finally, you find dripping over here. How can it be? This is air conditioned room, mind you. This is air conditioned room. This is air conditioned room. This is return air. Now the diffuser is not below the dew point temperature, neither there are no fresh air coming in. Apparently you can't see that. But what will happen? What will happen? The collar, spigot collar is leaky. Air comes out and hit, hit this, hit this. Surface temperature of the diffuser drop below the dew point. Any hot air hitting? The due to mixing, this will condensate. Or on top, there will be a condensation. Because when you find your your ring, the spigot ring is out, flexible is partially open. Flexible is partially open, that kind of thing. Uh, I, I, I have another experience. Uh, in a hotel, I have found uh, the, the, the bedrooms are sweating. When you go in the corridor, try to enter the bedroom, bedroom uh, door, Frame is condensing. You know, I I, I thought okay, there there are uh, fresh air leaking from the window, so I I put up duct tape. Fortunately, I put my hydrometer logger logger inside and log five days. Then I found viewpoint temperature is low. Temp the, the room temperature is going down drastically. When I check the thermometer, rather thermostat, circular knob thermostat, though it is showing 24, inside it is 19. So there are various things could lead to this problem. Main thing, surface temperature has to be lower than the dew point temperature of air. Next one. Yeah, last question, Channa. Uh, why can't we use uh, FAHUs for uh, precision application? Sorry, why can't we? Why can't we use fresh air handling unit for precision cooling? No, uh, uh, I can't. It is uh, getting blur. Again, cooling. why can't we use fresh air handling unit for IT application, oh. the precision uh, high sensible application? Now, fresh air unit and high temperature application is uh, unfortunately two, two different things. Because IT application, IT application, we need close control temperature. Now, fresh air unit doesn't have close control thing. What is close control? Now, close control is 50 RH close control. Now, to understand that, Normal air conditioners that what you have in your office, your room, 
banquet hall or restaurant rh is not controlled rh is not controlled what do you mean by that it is say 55 rh uncontrolled because with in this air condition we have only the room thermostat no humidistat no normally normal air conditioners rh is uncontrolled but precision you have controlled rh plus or minus Correct. 5% it, it, it is it is huge one so to in, in that air condition you have humidifiers dehumidifiers it is pushing water vapor in uh, reheating for because you can stop rh becoming too low if you set it for 50 it becomes 49 48 so you have to emit water vapor humidify then rh goes up you can stop that also then you have to have reheating the yeah fan fan can be controlled that also helps to maintain close control of thing but fresh air unit is totally different thing it is high high latent load application you i don't think uh, but but nevertheless uh, uh, dry areas where where humidity is very low probably probably okay okay chandra thank you very much thanks a lot many questions are there but we can answer later that's not a problem because we have crossed the time it's almost two and a half hours now you must be tired so many thanks to all yes. attendees and uh, we love your presentation and we look forward to host you again thank you chandra and thanks to our all uh, uh, sri lankan friend and uh, uae friend who are attending this seminar we have crossed uh, more than uh, 550 participants uh, from India, Sri Lanka, and UAE. Thank you very much. Thanks, Chandra. Thank oh. you very much. Yeah. From, from, so we can from log me, uh, uh, apologies. Ap apologies. Uh, I couldn't uh, use my camera. Uh, my computer doesn't allow me to use my camera. Apple got my computer. So sorry. Thank you very much. No problem. Thank you very much. Thanks. 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 Bye. Bye, everyone. Thanks.